my dear friends, today we're going to talk about Ocean Etude by Chopin. Uh, this etude I've chosen to show you how much easier to play this etude using piano roll system. Uh, when I was a teenager back in Russia 15 years ago, I used to play this etude for a long time and still I couldn't reach my full potential, I couldn't express everything I want, I couldn't actually play as fast as it's indicated in the score. <laughs> so this time I opened the city and I literally spent like five days to make it. Of course I probably I could make it, it's partly I could make it so fast because my fingers still remember. Um, how I played it long time ago, but in the technical way I could really see a huge difference between what I did that time and this time. Uh, I could play very fast with ease and this etude actually I think one of the most easiest etudes in the whole set of Indians by Chopin. <laughs> okay, so um, one more time for those of you who just joined me. <laughs> um, my name is Emma and this is on my video course Piano Well. And I'm going to talk about musical means of expression here that you may probably hear for the very first time. Uh, please go to my website and download my book for free and watch lessons, lessons of this video course that show and explain how to work with that book. Uh, you could master this technique, you could really understand then what I'm gonna talk about here. <clears throat> um, so yeah, let's go ahead and just start our tutorial finally. <laughs> So guys, we're gonna start as usually with imagining every note in the score in the timbre of, I'm using string group of instruments here, and let me show you how I actually arranged the music over here. Um, I'm really sorry again that I have to speak very soft. <laughs> because my voice is not strong anymore, I got sick and I'm still recovering, so I hope you still, I'm gonna talk slow so you can uh, catch every word very clear. So, coming back, um, the, the very first chord, this part I'm imagining in the violas, the sun cellos, over here, I'm imagining right hand in soprano, left hand uh, violas. And when I come back, I get violas and cellos. Uh, that's not really important way you um, start changing timbers, but I think this is the most easiest way to make it. Next, uh, mm, we analyze the movement, the pattern of the notes over here. And um, as we can see, uh, we have two directions, <laughs> up and down. So every second note is higher than previous when we're going up, and every next note is lower than previous when we're going down. That's why we're going to keep the same shape of our wrist all the way up and down. And the very first note I'm imagining to the left, so I'm moving my wrist to the left. unnecessary movement that will prevent you from playing confident and fast. Um, so make sure that when you imagine notes in timber with movement, when it comes to 
imagining both hands, you can clearly imagine two parts in your head. If you still struggle with that, if your polyphonic ear is not developed very well, the very first note, for example, just to remind you how we do this, if movement to the left is start from the top note, and we're imagining notes sequentially first. Again, in our mind then, we're going to reduce the time between them and imagine faster. Unless the time is zero and we can hear clear both parts in our mind. And the same we do with next pair of notes over here. actually imagining in my head because apparently you cannot read my mind so this all you do in your mind um, if you already done many exercises before then it shouldn't be a problem for you to imagine both parts in your mind very well now let's gonna uh, talk about elbow where we're moving our elbow here to um, prepare a new position um, Super easy here again. Everything is super easy here <laughs> in this eater. Um, I'm gonna use my second finger for transition notes to move my elbow, and it's gonna look this way. And I'm moving it to the right, to the right again. And this time, I'm moving to the left. Now, there are some, the pattern is always the same and there are some um, specific parts that change, uh, that change its pattern. So, um, let's go over them and take a look. So, starting from bar number 7, what I'm doing with my elbow. I'm moving it here as well. that you see this this very expressive melody uh, to make the line very smooth and expressive I really suggest you to move your wrist on the second note when you play with your pinky um, to the left because the melody goes to the left so basically when I move my wrist I'm moving right left Left, left, right, left, right, left, elbow, left, left, elbow, right, left, this way. Alright, so let's come back to elbows again. Um, so before, um, so in the bar 14, I'm moving my elbow here. Over here. I don't 
otherwise you will feel stiffness in your hand if you still try to play this arm in the same position but not moving your elbow you will have problems to actually hit this note um, accurately so please move your elbow here We have the same pattern, so when we come here, I move my elbow to the right, I move my elbow to the left. Okay, so bar 30, to the right, left, left, right. Bar 44. or make it intuitively then you have you have chance that you won't have enough room between torso and elbow to actually move your elbow also um, when later we're gonna play with weight and intonation you know if you see like this you cannot really evenly distribute weight between hands. For example, if, if you go up, then the right hand wouldn't have enough weight. But again, if you move to the right, you have enough weight for your right hand. When you're going down, the same thing happens with your um, the same thing happens with your left thing with your left hand. Again, if you keep remaining um, your sitting position this way, then left hand would play like uh, up, so I really encourage you to move your torso to give your hand enough weight. Uh, so again, I'm making it very clever, I know exactly the notes when I'm moving my torso. <laughs> again, in fast tempo, you know, every movement will be so, so small, You nobody 
would get any idea of what you're doing. <laughs> but in slow tempo we need to be maximally accurately to make all the movements very 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 detailed. So okay if we start from the beginning I'm actually moving my torso together with my elbow. So basically I'm moving my wrist, elbow, torso in the very second note. And here in the very second note and I'm going down over wrist, elbow, torso. But it works really well, so I really suggest you to do this. When we're going up, um, for example, bar 15, I'm moving on torso here. And I think I move my torso over here. I think, um, I'm not really sure now, I'm moving here. analysis, detailed analysis, and you can imagine every note. Again, make sure when you imagine um, notes uh, in both hands with movement, make sure that you make this small glissando between notes, that you sing it in your mind again this way. Oh, <clears throat> oh my god, I cannot sing. <clears throat> Imagine every note while playing and um, you know every movement you're gonna make you just start playing. Um, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of this. I'm playing without any intonation, without any weight, just imagining timber with movement in both hands, uh, moving my wrist, elbow and torso. Okay. you can move on and start playing with intonation and weight. Uh, before you do this, let's again take a look at accents 
that I'm written here on every half of the bar not suggesting you again to to look at these accents like literally to change intonation um, I think he might wrote them for phrasing that we're gonna talk about a little bit later in this video um, to emphasize like main intervals and small motifs so I'm not intonate these intervals with accent the only accent I'm making in the very last um, chord which I think is true because it's kind of Within the character of this music, so if we intonate, making it with correct intonation of accents that we learned before, this way, um, and that's it. I'm not intonating any of accents here. Again, you know, if we talk about like if we look about. Sorry, if you look at bar number 16 and you see these accents, what I'm doing here is I'm using these accents to basically, again, talk about it a little bit later, to basically voice some notes over here. I would voice this in the left hand, this in the right hand, left, right. So uh, every quaver, uh, every eighth note, I would just voice the notes over here. I think this is what he really meant here, not really excellent. So now let's go ahead and play it with intonation, with weight. Uh, I'm not playing it with pedal, I'm not playing it with forte, just intonation, weight, um, timber with movement, correct movements of torso, elbow and wrist. in this etude to feel and to remember emotional color of every chord and then later imagine nose in timber and color it with this emotional tint of every harmony and that will change that will change sensation in our fingertips and that will change the way we're gonna intonate while playing. So let's go ahead and just take a look at these harmonies. I absolutely love this etude mostly because of his of its harmonies. So we're gonna start with C minor. fresh people you always need to, to to catch which harmony sounds darker which is lighter which is more tense which is more calm um, which harmony is actually major which harmony is minor so yeah Actually, F major. 
every major is spoiled with minor right away. Imagine every note in timber harmony with movement um, and play it with intonation and weight. Again, no pedal, no dynamics. And you will feel different color of timber right away. And your intonation will become more expressive.
next one is dynamics and voicing. Oh, my voice is coming back, you know? <laughs> it's good, it's good. So, dynamics. Um, I'm gonna simply ignore all this, you know, with the windows and like huge, like two pages crescendo. It's all not really necessary. It will be done naturally when we are uh, gonna talk about phrasing. When we're gonna make phrasing, it's it will be done naturally. It's all about phrasing, really. Trust me. So I'm gonna imagine every note forte. I mean, at the very end, they're like probably fortissimo. So I'm gonna imagine it fortissimo. So anyway, um, we imagine notes in timber, in harmony, in a huge sound, really huge. And in this stage, just make as huge as you can and when you play it uh, because you're using it weight so you don't need to be afraid that your forte would be um, uh, harsh you know flat this kind of root sound or your hands would be strained if you play too forte so weight will make <laughs> will make a way weight will bring fullness like three-dimensional and freedom to your sound so um, dynamics if you want to make a good dynamics make sure you express it through intonation and weight <laughs> otherwise if I'm not doing it with intonation for example I'm just trying to play it with team and harmony movements that would be this way um, this way so the harsh sound my my wrist already feel not comfortable so no I'm gonna make it with intonation and with weight note in the barn in the left hand like the C all the time I'm doing this. Um, when we come here of course I'm making this one a voice melody in this texture every time. And as I said before in bar number 16 and the same uh, pattern bars I'm making this one and left hand here. Like left hand and right hand, again both hands over here, right hand, both hands. It really helps. And at the very last bars, I'm doing this. In the right hand, I'm always. same level and every 
hand want to like <laughs> how to say that in English um, I don't know how to say in English <laughs> whatever so it's very important to voice right hand here because that will let you and let you play with good singing sounds so the melody because you know in every shopping uh, piece it's very important to really trace the melody even in some kind of texture that doesn't really have a melody you still need to find something that you can sing and that you know can really touch the heart it's not just like impressionism you know so it really helps you to play with good singing tone I'm gonna show you, so I'm playing right now with Timber Harmony uh, Forte and I'm gonna voice, again when we voice we imagine closer these parts, I'm gonna voice right hand and left hand the very first note. Okay, and I'm playing again with weight and intonation. So next one, we're simply going to imagine every note in sound texture and when we imagine notes in sound texture, we imagine timbre in the deep uh, texture of water, in the texture of deep water. <laughs> and that will bring additional freedom to our body, to our arms, to our sound, to our intonation. And, and starting from this stage, I'm going to use pedal because now, when you imagine this sound, it's kind of in the harmony with pedal sounding. So, I'm gonna play with sound texture movement and with intonation. to be this way okay So we're going to the very next level for musical speech, phrasing, um, emotional image, form, full station and artistry. So with musical speech, um, it's kind of this part is kind of hard because you need to imagine like you really need to understand which interval you play in both hands 
and you know it goes like three and five and then six and four unison three and five six and four unison thanks god the pattern is the same so it's but there are some fragments that are really cool you know um the uh, Interval patterns just uh, match. For example, starting from bar 39, uh, it goes like every time augmented uh, fourth and diminished fifth, you know. some of our fingers are too weak and that's why they had tends to like sleep you know and um, not hit the right key so basically over here my uh, fifth finger is quite weak and it's really helpful when I'm going down and I really intonate this unison <laughs> because we express everything through intonation and weight so we have to play it expressing through intonation
uh, when this melody comes up, I basically intonate a musical speech by the pattern of this melody. So I'm going. Not really comfortable um, bar to play. It's bar number. Oh yeah, it's bar number twenty-seven when the right hand plays on all the black keys. So again, when I'm going down, intonate this unison. your fifth finger and make um, this passage be easier to play. Uh, so let's go to, to phrasing now. So the phrasing in this etude as usually <laughs> geniusly simple. <laughs> Um, there are certain motifs and phrases and sentences that um, remain their structure, I mean their limits, their like main sections during the whole etude. Uh, so I guess this is <laughs> that's why we call it study because everything is the same. So um, this is how I analyzed uh, motifs here. So in my opinion, one motif is one bar, and one motif has two small motifs inside. Uh, this is one mo sm one small motif. why coming back to this excellent topic this is why he may probably wrote this um, to really emphasize it more when pianist played um, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this each of the motif yeah so this pattern remains the same during the whole each of
um, and in the beginning over here I hold it for the whole bar and then I change it half of the bar I still hold it here even though the harmony a little like, like different but Actually, when you play it fast, it doesn't really change the picture at all. Um, yes, and starting from bar 65, I do this. I change over here, and then I hold it for the rest bar and the next bar, 66. So from here, one pen. this energy here so I really don't want to break it with um, this more clear sound when I'm changing the pedal every half of the bar so it doesn't really help here um, yeah so this little nuances about the pedal I wanted to share with you so let's coming back to phrasing so I just played for you with motifs and now let's play with um, Oh yeah, okay. I basically played for you with like small motifs. So now I'm gonna play by actually motifs. And in this motif, uh, second small descending motif, I play uh, with more meaning. So I emphasize second small motif in the motif. And it looks like this. Yeah, and it looks like this.
everywhere the same. Yes, everywhere the same. So that was phrase. And now sentence. So sentence consists of four bars, two phrases. And um, in the sentence, you know, the main phrase is not regular. So uh, sometimes I emphasize the first phrase in the sentence, sometimes I make more important be a uh, second phrase. I think um, I'd better play for you and just explain along the way. Okay, we'll try. <laughs> So the first one, uh, usually, usually I make first phrase more important than second phrase. Okay, so first phrase more important than second phrase. Uh, when it's going to be second phrase more important, I'm going to say I'm changing something like this. <laughs> We're just going to say now second phrase more important. <laughs> so let's go, first phrase more important.
aggressiveness, emotional to your playing. Um, yes, okay, so we're going ahead and the pattern is still the same. First phrase more important than the second phrase. <laughs> That was 
sentences and that was the whole phrase along with pedal. <laughs> Now um, we making emotional image, so we playing this etude with phrasing, with musical speech, with intonation, with weight, uh, constantly control our um, control everything that we imagine in our head. Uh, playing with emotional image is such a such an enjoyable level because you actually can feel. Uh, this energy between notes. So this is where intonation really shows uh, its benefit because you cannot, you know, just express emotional image just thinking about this. You should keep it and remain it somehow while playing. You should express it and convey it through your playing. So intonation and musical speech is the only way how you can do this. So I'm gonna play with emotional image feeling uh, how through every single interval I am expressing the energy of this etude. When we're going to talk about form, we uh, really need to analyze first the parts of the form. Well, every one of you can make, make it your way, it's your interpretation, um, but the way I made it is this one. Um, I think the very first... full passion right away. <laughs> so it's just beginning. And starting from uh, bar 9 I make a uh, development. Now this one I actually change the emotions. <laughs> it's more like triumph over here, not any more like suffering. And um, I made this part till bar 31 some kind of intensification, you know, something between development and rising to climax. So starting from 31, of course the music tells you, right, I made this, that's rising to climax, and um, it leads to the culmination itself, this is our first combination, that comes to the bar 47. So this is the, actually the second time we're going to play it on the peak, you know. So the first time we start is just beginning, and the second time is just the full combination. So after this, starting from bar uh, 55, I'm going to another part of the seated. I think the seated consists of two parts, so it's two combinations. So second part starting from fifth bar from starting from bar 55, and I'm not really sure, but. <laughs> I kind of did like this. This one, I made development from here, intensification. And from bar uh, 63, um, rising to climax. Beginning, develop. 
love made intensification rising to climax climax and then the second part beginning and the intensification and rising to climax climax and conclusion so two parts uh, why do we need this <laughs> again to distribute energy while playing so how each it wouldn't sound too noisy um, and too um, boring you know and it's actually even easier to play this way when you you know before you start playing you really imagine the structure of this piece and you imagine okay so that's gonna be culmination when you play and that means that back from culmination we're going to you know beginning and it's just a beginning so if I start to play I'm gonna think about emotional image together with um, mixed with this kind of form and then I would just get away and start playing uh, with intonation with musical speech and phrasing so in the beginning uh, it would sound this way So in the stage where you need uh, to feel pulsation, I'm gonna, mm, we don't play with rubata anymore. And I pulsate every quarter of the bar. Uh, so, as I said before, I organize with my pulsation everything I'm doing, every sound I create, everything now in space, in time. So basically, before I start playing, uh, what, I, what I'm thinking, I'm thinking about emotional image in the form, and I feel it in the certain pulsation, whether it's slow tempo or moderate or fast tempo. And my image becomes like altogether 
one was this pulsation. It's like heartbeat, you know? <laughs> you really give the music a heartbeat. Uh, so, and then I just start playing. And the last step, if we really want to play it in front of the audience confidently, we're gonna speak out this confidently. So again, we everything do through intonation, and we simply express everything through artistry. Uh, we might we tune. We again think about emotional image and you know form and pulsation, and then we simply express it through artistry, through different way of. Um, speaking through a different way of intonating. pronounce uh, the notes, the way you intonate the notes. Alright, so um, after this, this is analyzing stage that I usually takes for me three days I guess to make it and then after that it's a simple learning stage where I train my hands to play uh, faster and uh, to train endurance in my hands, so like stamina. Uh, for playing faster, what I would do, I would take small fragment, uh, maybe just a two sentence, something like that, around one page, and um, I would play it in different tempos several times, like in slow tempo five times, in moderate tempo five times, in fast tempo five times. Then I would take another page and do the same with another page. And the next day, um, I will start training my endurance, so I would take bigger part and do the same way. So for example, two pages. If yesterday I made one page, and maybe today I would make one, two pages. And two pages I again repeat at slow tempo a couple of times, and moderate and fast. Then I would go with three pages, and I would go with four pages, um, until I can play the whole etude in fast tempo and feel absolutely free and easy <laughs> while playing. Uh, yeah, so this is it. <laughs> uh, I, I have nothing to add anymore and um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your comments and I really hope I can inspire someone to start practicing well, <laughs> not just in a stupid way anymore. And you can see that it's much more efficient and much more enjoyable. <laughs> Alright guys, so have a very nice day. See you in my next video. Bye.